Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. First start, uh, I'm not going to do part one, part two. We'll just do different titles for this uh, series of going through for Christmas. So this one is the word Christmas. Now, if you know something, I really don't have my Bible with me because the word Christmas isn't in the King James Bible. And a lot of the definitions and the history of where Christmas came from, the title, the name, you can't use scripture because it's not in scripture. It's like trying to defend the Trinity with scripture when the Trinity isn't in scripture, okay? The definitions of Trinity aren't in scripture. So we will be, if you have your King James Bibles, we will be mentioning a couple verses because I still like to throw Bible verses in here. So I can start out by saying again, uh, he that answereth the matter before you hear it, it's folly and shame unto you. Uh, so the word Christmas, when did the word Christmas come into use? Let's start with the origins of the word Christmas. I told you we're going to talk about things that a lot of people who vehemently stand for Christmas will not talk about. Okay? There's a lot of, we're going to go through a lot of different theories because that's all we can. Christmas is a worldly term coined by the lost world. Uh, fall, uh, we're, like I so said, we're going to get into this. We can go through different definitions, but there's the call the law of first mention. Remember that, the law of first mention. They can try to twist things, they can try to change definitions all they want, but what's the law of first mention? It means, the law of first mention means the first time a word is mentioned in the Bible, it's followed by a definition oftentimes. It's defined the first time it's used. That goes with history too. First time a word comes in, like a title or a phrase, there's a history behind it. There's a, de a meaning to it, okay? The phrase dates back to 1038 uh, A.D., okay? so more than a thousand years after Jesus Christ was born. Let that sink in, brothers and sisters in Christ. The term Christmas didn't come in until a thousand years after Jesus was born. Okay? Uh, so before Christmas, um, remember Jesus' birth any time. So before Christmas, remember, Jesus' birth any time of the year and even multiple times as God put in... That's me putting it down, I'm sorry. So before Christmas, remember, Jesus' birth, uh, people celebrated it any time of the year. Let me get it out because sometimes I put it in my notes and do it real quick. You do it any time of the year. Uh, you, you might just decide all of a sudden, today I'm going to do it. I'm going to give God glory. I'm going to get joy. So... Um, because my biggest thing is, is in the Bible, where was Jesus celebrating his birthday? Moses, I don't know, um, Joseph and Mary. Okay, where were the disciples that Jesus had before they left him doing it? Because they, he had his earthly ministry was for three years. Okay, where was the disciples, uh, apostles doing it? You know, even after his death, where was the apostles? Where was the early church doing it? Where is it written in Scripture? You know what I'm saying? Uh, we did studies. Um, about it's not a liberty issue, where is it ordained by God saying you can or you will or now uh, observe the day, because it's a, we're going to get into this, holy days. Um, where is that at where it's God ordained? Okay? It's not in scripture. Okay? So Christmas came out a thousand years after the birth of Jesus Christ. People started celebrating his birth a thousand years as far as a national, not national, but a specific day of the year holiday as you want to say, the, the lost world term, holiday. All right. um, here's something to understand. Early Christians from history, uh, and like I said, I take this with a grain of salt. I can only get a lot of this stuff from um, some secular sources, and very few Bible-believing Christians will, uh, not professing Christians, even some Bible-believing will actually get out there and preach the absolute truth and tell you everything. But one thing I realized when I did the study was is that Christians actively rejected the celebration of Christ's birth as they saw birthdays as pagan rituals followed in the Bible by the figure like the, the Pharaoh. So evidently holidays were something the pagans did way before Christians did. All right. So I'm not getting in there by saying Christmas uh, birthdays themselves are pagan, like celebrating them. Um, because I haven't done that study, but early Christians thought they were, and they likened it to practices done by pagan people, Pharaoh, Egypt. Okay. 
So birthdays, we're celebrating birthdays as a holiday, as a holiday, holy day, <laughs> as we get into this, uh, was rejected okay, by the early Christians. Now, I can't be 100%, this is absolute fact, because I wasn't there. Because that's the first thing people will hit me up to defend Christmas. I wasn't there. But here's my thing. All I can do is, okay, let me back it by Scripture. Where is it mentioned in Scripture? Okay, Not the birth of Jesus Christ, making it a specific day every year, a holy day that Christians should celebrate. You have a choice, but you should celebrate it. Where is it at in Scripture? So there's a lot of truth there. Okay. Okay. Just touch on Easter. Uh, they they say Easter and Pentecost. Okay. Celebrating seven weeks after each Easter to mark the descent of the Holy Spirit um, upon the apostles and other followers of Jesus Christ were the main occasions in the Christian calendar for ecclesiastical feasts until midway through the fourth century. Okay. When Christmas and Ephany were added to the calendar. Now, December 25th uh, was then established as the Nativity Feast Day. Okay. Uh, it says in here, they say not necessarily the uh, day Jesus was born, but that's another story. And I had to laugh because, of course, it's another story. People like to brush that off and say, well, it's not a big deal. Who cares? What happened to the love of absolute truth? If what happened to being uh, a Bible believer that the King James Bible is uh, your foundation in all matters of faith and practice? Practice. If Jesus wasn't born December 25th and nowhere near December 25th, why are you celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ on December 25th? King James Bible spells out that it gives us an, it doesn't give us a specific day which is another red flag. If it's a day we're supposed to keep, why didn't God tell us the day? He's the one that declares holy days, not Christians, not men. Okay, God does. Why didn't God tell us the day that Jesus was born? Okay. Now, uh, the official Nativity Mass was the first Mass of the day held at 9 a.m. Okay. That's where Christmas orients, uh, they said December 25th, and it's a mass that's held at 9 a.m. As times passed, the celebration of Christmas became more popular. And so, too, did the, the church, I can't even pronounce that, it's like a Catholic term, practices that went with it, litur liturgical pa practices that went with it. Okay. Remember what I did? It says right here, it says Christmas became more popular. I did a study called um, High Places or Babel Buildings, <laughs> Church Buildings. I said Church Buildings, I think. All right. And the reason, one of the things I did in that study is that in order to, for the uh, king, uh, the, you had the king split off. So there was two kings. There's the king of Judah, of the tribe of uh, Benjamin, uh, Jesus, or uh, King David. God promised that there'd be someone on the throne. And then there was a king of the other 11 tribes out of the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? And that king, and I'm just paraphrasing, in order to keep people from going back to Judah, because that's where the temple was, that's where they were ordained that God commands, that's where the sacrifices are to be done. So to keep them from going back there, he creates these high places for them to do their sacrifices. And how does he make that appealing to people? He did feast days and then put on a big flesh show, like flesh service, if you want to say, for these Babel buildings. But he enticed people okay, with uh, traditions of men and practices that appealed to the flesh. Okay? And what is Christmas? You know, how did Christmas become more popular? It became something that they had a lot of. They started adding practices after practice that is not based in Scripture that appeals to the flesh. Okay. But 10,030 A.D. is um, when Christmas became a yearly thing, a set yearly thing. Okay. Christmas Mass became a central fixture in the church calendar, which led to the day becoming known as Christ's Mass by the 11th century. 
okay, uh, that we read up there, okay. It, back then, it was known as Christ Mass. I've had people, we're going to keep going through here, because the next part is, what does the word Christmas come from? Uh, when it came into use, where did it come from? What's the definition of Christmas we're going to get into there? People will mock that, saying, people say it means Christ Mass. It doesn't mean Christ Mass. We're going to get into this, and yeah, it does. There's no getting around it. You can try to lie. You can try to deceive people. But there's no way around it. Christmas is not in the King James Bible. So I can't go to the King James Bible and say, okay, law first mentioned, here's Christmas, and here's the following few verses that will define what Christmas is. You can't do that. You have to go off with the lost world. And as the lost world, uh, history, facts, okay, fact is 1030 AD is when it came into being. And as we read, the Catholic Church instituted it. They, can't, they coined the phrase Christmas. They're the ones that instituted it. You have Christ, the first part of the word, and Mass, the second part of the word. And they, they put it together to make Christmas. Okay. Okay. Now, there's just no getting, away, getting around that. What does the word Christmas come from? Where does the word Christmas come from? I meant to say where, but not what. Where does the word Christmas come from? Well, the word Christmas comes from Middle English Christ. Christe Masse, I think I'm pronouncing that, um, which in turn comes from Old English Christes Masses, literally meaning Christ's Mass. What do you do with that? When it first came into, uh, the term was first used, it was defined as saying it means Christ's Mass. You can't get around that. Okay, you can try to hide the truth, you can try to ignore the truth, but remember, brothers and sisters in Christ, we're supposed to have a love of the truth. We're supposed to research things. We're supposed to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You want your works not to burn up at the judgment seat of Christ? You study the Bible and make sure that they line up with the Bible. Okay, so... Right there, we start out because I have to go off the uh, secular world and uh, you know definitions and meanings based off of when it first came out. Right. Now, it says here, of course, we'll throw this in there. We are not talking about the physical mass of Christ's body. The origins of mass in the Christian sense of the word is not entirely clear. So they're not saying that we can go off of absolute truth to say it's talking about the Eucharist. Okay, but you can't defy, you can't deny that Christ and Mass, that's what it means. Christmas means Christ Mass. Okay, and where did it come from? The Catholic Church. Okay. Now, people will say that Christmas has nothing to do with the Catholic Mass Eucharist. The Eucharist, which is also called the Holy Communion, Mass, the Lord's Supper, or the Divine Litur Liturgy, there's that word again, is a sacrament, get this, accepted by almost all Christians. Christians don't say that they do or carry out the Eucharist. In other words, they don't practice it, but it's not condemned. And there's a lot of truth in that. These Christians are false, most of them. And there's even some Bible-believing Christians that they believe it's satanic and everything, but when they get up in front of the pulpit in those Babel buildings, they will not outright condemn the Eucharist. And when you don't condemn it outright, you accept it. Okay. You're telling the world that you accept the Eucharist. Okay. So Mass doesn't necessarily mean 100%. You can prove it, that it means, um, in my studies, that it means the Catholic Mass. But think about it. Where did the word Mass come from? Okay. We're getting to the dis, uh, definitions here in a second. Where did Mass come from? It's a Catholic term. Not a Bible term. Okay, I typed it in there. You can't find Mass in the Bible. If I'm wrong, correct me. Now, we know it comes from Latina Misa. Okay, when the word uh, Christ must, when you get into the Latin where its origin, true origin is Misa. Right. But there are several competing theories as to what Misa is supposed to mean. That's why they say Mass doesn't mean the Catholic Mass. Right. You say, where do people get this from? I've heard, uh, I think Brother Brian said it. I don't know where people get that from. 
I don't know if he said it like that, but he said it's not Christ's Mass like the Eucharist. But Mass is, by definition, part of Christmas. Okay. That's when it first came into being. We talked about that. Okay. Some scholars say it's a form of Latin verb materia, in which case it would mean something that has been sent. Okay. Jesus Christ, uh, God came into the world in the likeness of sinful flesh. God manifests in the flesh the birth of Jesus Christ. But here's the kicker. But it cannot refer to Christ himself because Misa is grammatically feminine. Kind of like Trinity, it's feminine. So it can't, ha it can't mean when you say Christ Christmas, which is Christ Mass, if it comes from Misa, it can't mean Jesus' birth, okay? A celebration or a holiday where you're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. It's feminine. Okay. Others say it's a late form of Latin "missio," meaning dismal, dismissal. If I pronounce it right, this is supported by the fact that the Catholic Mass are traditionally concluded with the words. I can't pronounce. It's Italian, but it means "go." The dismal is made. Dismissal is made. Okay. Provided this interpretation is correct. Now. I'm throwing this stuff out there because people are like, how can people think that Christmas means Christ's Mass, the Mass that the Catholics do? Look at its origins. Actually do the study. Okay. Okay. Now, here's another. I'm throwing out all of them. Here's another one. Yet another explanation is the fact is that it is, in fact, the Hebrew word Misa, Messiah, or Misa, not Messiah, unleavened bread which God commanded to be offered with the Passover sacrifice in the Exodus. Now, a lot of these people, I think, are way off, okay? So far in this study, like I said, Mass. Who came up with the term Mass? Catholics. What does Mass mean? It means when they come together at 9 a.m. in the morning to do a, that service that they do, okay? That's where it comes from, the word Mass comes from. Christmas was coined, 1000, uh, was it 1037 B.C.? As far as it's okay, it's now a day that will be observed every year, and the Catholic Church was the one that put it out. That's the origins of the word Christmas, not the birth of Jesus Christ. You want the origins of the birth of Jesus Christ? King James Bible, God's perfect written word. We're talking about the word Christmas. Okay, now what does the word Christmas mean? Christ. We have to break it up because that's the only way to get the definition. Christmas itself, that's how they do it, okay? So Christ, we know what Christ means in the Bible, the anointed, okay? Uh, Messiah is the old, uh, Hebrew coming into English, and um, Christ is the Greek coming to English, okay? Okay, it's given to the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. He is the Savior of the world, okay? He who came into the world, the anointed one, you go in the Old Testament, the kings that were anointed of God, or, uh, the kings, uh, you got King Saul, he was anointed by God. Okay? Uh, King David, anointed by God. Solomon, anointed by God. Okay, He's the anointed one. Jesus came into the world to be their king. Okay? That's where the word Christ comes from. Okay? Mass, now we get into Mass. The word signifies primarily leisure, cessation, I can't pronounce that, from labor, cessation from labor, from the Latin misus reminis, like the Latin ferrari, I hate going into other languages. So basically it's Latin in origin, okay? hence a feast or holiday. Right, that's what mass means, it means to cease from labor, it's a feast day or holiday, okay? Now, oftentimes, the, bit, the only definition I can find mainly is the service of the Romish Church, the office or prayers used at the celebration of the Eucharist to consecrate to the consecration of the bread and the wine. That's the main definition I found of Mass. But like I said, I'm, I'm going to tell you the whole truth, and I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, It's a day that's set aside from work, and it's like a feast day or holy day. It could be another definition. Or holiday, not holy day. I said it wrong. Holiday. Okay. Now, once again, Mass is not found in the King James Bible. So I can't give you a clear, this is what it means, absolute. 
because the King James Bible is my foundation in all matters of faith and practice. That's where I get my absolute truth from. Now, I'm not against people using words that are not found in the King James Bible in your day-to-day. -day. However, when it comes to things pertaining to God's Word, if you're going to sit there and say, I'm going to celebrate Christmas and it's based off of the birth of Jesus Christ, it's celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, then Christmas needs to be in the Bible. Okay. When you're trying to say something is Christian and it's based off the Bible, it needs to be in the Bible. We go hardcore, Trinity's not in the Bible, but when it comes to Christmas, we have no problem using the word Christmas. And we don't like doing the research on what the word Christmas means. Okay? Christmas, no matter how you get around it, does mean, when I looked into it, at first I was standing, was it Brother Brian that said it? It doesn't mean that. I was like, well, he's done the study, he's done the research. If he says it, I was being one of those people that were being a PWC, Polly Wonder Cracker, parroting what somebody else said. When I actually did the study, uh, it does mean Christ Mass. Now, Mass, like we just read, doesn't necessarily mean the Eucharist. It could mean a feast or holy day. Okay, we read that. But when Mass was first used, Christmas, it was based off of the Eucharist. That's where Christmas first came from. Okay, Law of First Mention. I'm just not, I'm just, I'm putting that out because I, I got a little frustrated and angry when people were coming out and it's not just with Christmas, it's with anything. They'll come out and they won't tell you the whole truth, okay? I'm trying to give you the whole truth in my studies, okay? But bottom line, if you're going to grab something from the Bible and say, or use a term and say it means this out of the Bible, it needs to come from the Bible, the birth of Jesus Christ is in the Bible. So if you want to celebrate the day that Jesus was born and give God glory, give God thanks and praise Him for it, coming into the world and setting, you know, lights come into the world and it's paved the way for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, absolutely, that's in the Bible. But Christmas is not in the Bible. Now, I'm going over this little section right here to let you know that I don't always go off the uh uh, Webster's 1828 Dictionary, and it doesn't always line up with it, okay? Now, when you type in holiday in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, okay, or no, yeah, it'll say, see holy day. In other words, it's trying to say holiday means the same thing as holy day, and it doesn't. Why? Because is Mother's Day a holy day? No. Is Father's Day a holy day? Memorial Day, um, Halloween, <laughs> no, uh, Easter, definitely not. Are they holy days? No. So the world has perverted the word holy day, and it's even wrong in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. We'll get to the why, okay, based off scripture. Holiday, when you get to holiday, a day of joy and gravity, a day of exemption from labor, a day of amusement. Okay. No labor is really done, and it's a day of joy and gravity, according to the Bible. Okay. Or not Bible, sorry. To the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. The worldly de uh, definition is uh, a day of festivity or recreation when no work is done, a day where you set work aside. Now, if you do your own Bible study, the true definition of holy day is a day that God ordains. It's a day that God ordains, not man, God, okay? Something is done, he ordains it, say this day you'll, you will keep this, this is what you do, this is why it's being done. Those three things, the day, what you're to do, and why it's being done. And who ordains it? God. Now it's a holy day. Man cannot ordain something and say this is being done and claim it's a holy day. That's why they use the word holiday for Christmas. Because you know, a lot of people will say that, I, uh, was it holiday, holiday or holy day? Uh, holiday doesn't mean holy day at all. You, read, you do your study on the Bible, holy day is a day that uh, God ordains. Holiday is a day that man ordains. They're not the same thing. <laughs> now, remember how the Sabbath day where you are not to work. That's the first thing that came to mind. Well, the Sabbath day must be a holy day. Okay? But 
the Sabbath in the Bible is separated from Holy Day in the Bible. So if you have your Bible out, Colossians 2, 16, if you want to turn there. Uh, it says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, God ordained, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath day. Okay, It separates Sabbath day from holy day. And why do I believe that that's important? I believe that based on Scripture that there was work to be done in holy days. You're not to do any work on the Sabbath day, but there was, like I said, there's a boundary. Uh, almost like the study we did on liberty. There's some work that's not to be done, but there's still work that has to get done in order to accomplish what Jesus set, or Jesus is God, sets down and says, this is the day, this is what you do, and this is why you do it. There's work involved. Okay. Leviticus 23, uh, do you want to turn to Leviticus chapter 23, verse 5? We're going to go to the Old Testament, uh, looking at one of the days that's supposed to be kept. And the fourteenth day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread, and the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. Words have meaning. We'll get to servile work. Therein, where, therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. Seven days worth of offerings. Every day they're given offerings. And the seventh day is a holy convoca convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Now, the word servile, such as pertain to a servant or slave, slavish mean, such as proceeds from dependence, as servile fear, servile obedience, okay, held in subjection, dependent. That's what servile means. There's certain work that wasn't supposed to be done as far as outside work, if you want to say. But there was still work to be done because they had all these sacrifices they had to do. Um, there was these feasts that they were doing, cooking and all this stuff. Um, they had to gather sticks. That was the biggest thing. Nowhere in that passage does it say they're going to supposed to get everything beforehand to prepare for the um, feast. I mean, you had to do some preparation. Don't get me wrong. I mean, but you know what I'm saying? The whole point is, I believe why they separated it was uh, the Sabbath day work wasn't be, to be done, period. On holy days, servile work. It separates the definition. All work to just the servile work isn't supposed to be done because there's work to be done setting up the feast and accomplishing the Passover. All right. So I wanted to throw that in there to show that I don't always go off the Webster's 1828 dictionary. Holiday is separated, or holy day is separated from the Sabbath day because there is work being done on holy days. Uh, you set aside your outside, the, the, when I say outside work is anything that's outside the bounds of that holy day. When it comes to the holy day, accomplishing that holy day, the directives that were given by God, there was work to be done. Right? But you're not to do outside work. Okay, go work in the field, plant some, you know, vegetables, stuff like that. You're not to do servile work. Right? But there's still work to be done. But holiday does not mean holy day. If you've been saying that, you need to get it out of your vocabulary. Okay? Holiday is a man-ordained day. Holy day is God-ordained. Right. Now, as we, uh, I want to hit something real quick that's been thrown out there that's just been bugging me, so one more point to be made, but I just want to go over it a little bit more, okay? We talked about when G uh, Christmas came into play, 1030, okay? The Catholic Church, uh, that's why the word comes Christ and Mass. You can't get away from it. It does, Christmas does mean Christ Mass. You can't get away from it. If you try, you're lying and you're deceiving people. Now, does Mass necessarily mean the Eucharist? We read in there, it can mean several different things. But, once again, who came up with it first? The Catholic Church. Okay. Not Christians. Christians didn't celebrate birthdays for the first thousand years. Uh, real Christians. Okay. Um, where did it come from? The English language, the definition we talked about. Okay? I just want to end it with uh, German. I want to go to German because that was bugging me. Uh, it was frustrating. And I, if I mention Brother Brian sometimes, it's because he's the only one I've watched 
uh, as far as Bible believing Christian, because he's there's very few uh, Bible believing, God fearing ministries left out there. That he's a proponent that stands for Christmas, and people got him frustrated because he kept using the word Christmas, which does mean Christ Mass. And he came out and said, "Well, Vinoctin then." And I was like, "Well, Vinoct." He says, "Vinoctin means Night of the Holy Child." And when I've done my research, we're going to talk about it real quick. And it's like, um, I was like, okay, sure, okay. So, Night of the Holy Child in German. It'll never come up as Weihnachten. Not once. I've typed it in for translation. It doesn't. But let's look at what Weihnachten means. But let's start at the English word again. This is another place I went and searched it up, so let's look up Christmas again. The English word Christmas comes from the combination of Christ Mass. When you type it in, uh, do a Google search and everything. Christmas, its origins, what does it mean? It keeps coming up. It means Christ plus Mass. Christ plus Mass, time and time and time again. So why do people get this idea? They always try to say this funny idea and this false idea that it means Christ plus Mass. You do the history, that's when it was first coined. The phrase came from Christ and Mass. They shoved them together. Okay. Uh, from Old English, we talked about Christ, may say, the world. And then I looked at the word Yule or Yuletide. This is important because it gets into the Christmas word, um, Weihnachten. Okay. The word Yule or Yuletide, often used for Christmas, I never knew this, this is shocking to me, comes from the Germanic Old English Geol, the name of the winter solstice pagan festival. Okay. That's what Yuletide is, is the winter solstice. Uh, pagan festival. In, Ro in Ro Romance languages, the word for Christmas usually refers to the birth of the Christ child. French Niol, Italian Natalia, and Spanish Navida are all based on the Latin word Natalis, which is birth. Okay. So that's in there. I just thought, that, okay, Yuletide, it actually means winter, it's a translation to the winter solstice, which is a pagan festival. And that'll be a whole nother video talking about why is Christmas on December 25th? What's so important about that day? The winter solstice. Now, the German word Weihnachten is Nordic slash Germanic and has its origin in Middle High German. Wei and not uh, consecrated or holy night. That's what they're trying to say it means today, holy night. So could it mean night of the holy child? The way they use it today, you can use a word and misuse it. Yeah, I'm not against it saying it can't be, but like I said, when you type in the translation, uh, Weihnachten, when you say translation to English, it keeps coming out with Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Weihnachten is just Christmas in German, the word Christmas in German. Okay, it doesn't actually translate like you would translate, Como uh, esta? How are you? You translate into English, how are you? It doesn't translate in Night of the Holy Child. But does it, it has a definition, a meaning of consecrated or holy night. Okay? Doesn't translate, but this is meaning. There's definitions and there's translations. Okay? The first written mention of the word Vinoctin, law first mentioned. This will surprise you guys. Ugh, sorry. Okay. The first written mention of the word Weihnachting was found in a document from 1170. There we go. It's back to that time period when Christmas first came out. See, den Wein Nachting. Nachting. Okay. Uh, and translation is in the Holy Nights plural. That's important for the S plural. Holy Nights plural. Okay. Not Holy Night. Of the like the night of the holy child singular, it's uh, in the holy nights. That's the origins of the word by Nocton, the definition and translation. I mean, the Germanic tribe celebrated D. I can't pronounce that by Nocton on the winter solstice. There we go, the winter solstice again. You can't get away from it. By the way, the Czech word for Christmas, the notes, is derived from the German. Okay. So, basically, Weihnachten really means, when you go back to Law of First Mention, in the Holy Nights. Okay? Now, why is German word for Christmas plural? 
That's a good question. Not night of the holy child, singular, in the holy nights, plural. Why is it plural? One theory, they can go off theory, because like I said, a lot of things in the past sometimes can get twisted to where there's just so many things, is that the plural form, based on the MHD, uh, date of plural form, vine notten mentioned above, comes from the original pagan Germanic uh, rake, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, meaning raw nights, plural again. The long, cold winter nights of the winter solstice period when the people of far northern Europe awaited the return of the sun to celebrate the coming rebirth of the light, they used candles and evergreen wreaths. Candles and evergreen wreaths. So when we light candles at Christmas and use wreaths, it's based off the summer solstice. Right? We'll get into some of the traditions of men in another video, but that right there, it's like, I remember the wreaths you put on the door. People like to light candles. I light candles, you know, when I eat sometimes, and mainly during the winter. I don't really light candles at all during the summer, but during the winter, I go without power sometimes. Lighting candles helps heat up the house and save energy. I don't have to have the pellet stove on. But when you do it for Christmas, it's based off of paganism. Okay. Uh, items that are still part of the Christmas observance today. It was not until the 12th century mentioned above that the raw nights became the Christian blessed nights. So the first definition, they changed it. I mean, the first time that we read about Vinochton, the, the, the way it's used today is blessed nights. Uh, by definition, um, it means night of the holy child if you want to use it by definition. Translation, it doesn't. Translation, it means Christmas. It's When you translate something, it's going from one language to another. So, Vinochton translated into English is Christmas. Now, definition-wise, it might be, you, they might say, hey, Night of the Holy Child is the definition. It's the whole point of Christmas in German, Vinochton, Night of the Holy Child. Okay, But it changed. It wasn't originally meaning that. What did Vinochton originally mean Whole, in the Holy Nights? Okay, the summer solstice. That's the origins of Vinochton. And I had to look into that because it's like people, uh, Brian did it. I've seen some other people do it. When you really want to justify something, you don't actually do the research. So now, am I saying Brother Brian is lying to you? No. It's been twisted and changed that today the definition of Vinochton is night of the holy child, holy night, whereas Vinochton in the past, when it was first coined, first came up, law first mentioned, it meant, uh, um, well, we read it, holy night, or not holy nights, uh, yeah, holy nights, plural, talking about the summer solstice. That's the origins of Vinochton, okay? It doesn't mean, like I said, Satan will twist things and get you to do things, say things, and use things in a different way. You know, half-truths, he'll tell you the half-truth, well, night of the holy child is great, but the lie part comes from is that's not what it originally meant. Okay, it's been twisted and changed so it's more acceptable to the people. So, uh, just to recap, we're talking about the word Christmas, okay? It came out in 1030. Christmas wasn't there back with uh, Paul, okay? Uh, Peter, John, okay? Jesus Christ, okay? It wasn't there. Um, and then we talked about where the word Christmas comes from. You can't get away from it. It's two words smashed together. Christ and Mass slash smashed together. Now, um, people through all this, don't get so upset. I'm not, we're going to get into Christmas. Or not Christmas. My, there's noises going on. It started distracting me. We're going to get into the birth of Jesus Christ. Is it wrong to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ? We're going into Christmas. That's the biggest thing about this. People will defend Christmas and people will mock absolute truth. And there's people making videos that will not tell you absolute truth. Okay? They won't tell it to you. Okay? Christmas was phrased a thousand years after Jesus was born. There was no Christmas for a thousand years after the birth of Jesus Christ. As far as a holiday. Yearly observance of the birth of Jesus Christ. Okay. It wasn't there. Uh, I believe, this is me, I believe Christians back then, they remembered it. They didn't have a specific day. Oh, today we're going to talk about the birth of Jesus Christ. We're going to give God glory. Thank you, Lord, for coming into the world. And 
dying for a sinner like me, a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner like me. They celebrated it any day of the year. Whenever God put it on their heart that they need to do a teaching on it and preach it to the people, you know, that kind of stuff. I believe that's what was going on for the first thousand years. I don't believe Christmas didn't come up, didn't come up for a thousand years. To say, so to say Christmas is Christian, who came up with it? We talked about it. When did it come out? And who was practicing it? We talked about that. So this is the first vi series of videos, the word Christmas. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.